Okay, so today I'm going to be working on this snowblower here. This lady near me has uh, had this for a while now. She said she thinks it was used once and it hasn't been used in about two years and it's not running now. I went over there. She needed me to snowblow her driveway. She said she had the snowblower but tried to start it and it wouldn't start. So I'm thinking it's just uh, bad gas. It's, this thing is full of gas and the gas was on when I, when I found it in the garage. Um, so I'm pretty sure it just needs a carb clean, but before I do that, I just want to make sure I'm not missing any safeties or anything. So in order to test to make sure I'm not just being, uh, ignorant with all these controls is just to make sure that it's getting spark. So I'm going to test for spark. If it's got spark, then it should be able to run without, um, any of the controls being, uh, off or any of the safeties being off. So I'm going to ch check, make sure there's spark. And if there's spark, then we'll go ahead and pull the carb off and clean the carb. So now that I know that it's not just a control being off since it had spark, I'm gonna go ahead and take the carb off here. And in order to do that, I took off all these bolts that were in here, here, there, there, which go through these, this uh, exhaust guard here. And in order to get to the carb, you also have to take off these two nuts that go on the end of these studs that hold the carb on. Once you take all those off, you pull this, uh, this big piece off here. Um, and then in order to pull the entire carb off, what I'm gonna do is pull off all these lines. So this is the primer line. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off, just like that. And then next is gonna be the fuel line, which is right here. Um, it's very important, you just turn the gas off. You can see that is now in the off position there. That way, when I pull this fuel line off, not, uh, the, the, not all the fuel will come out, only what's left in that line there. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this guy up. I'll do this with some tools off camera, but you gotta take this gasket off here. Just remember where everything goes. You can see it looks like there is some stuff right there. It's not gummed up fuel, it's like leaves and stuff. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just, like I said before, just remove all these lines. Then we're gonna pull off the linkage here. The way all this works is you just take that clamp off and you pull that line off that uh, fitting there for the fuel to go in. And then the way you get this linkage off is you just have to pull this carb out to about there, slide this uh, throttle all the way over, and then pop this up and it should slide right off. So now that that's all disconnected, we can go ahead and pull the carb off. What I'm gonna do at this point is take off this, Let's see if we can see that, pull off this bolt right there, and that is gonna allow us to drain all the fuel, if there is any, in the bottom of this bowl. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I tear it open because I don't want any of the fuel to go all over my workbench. So once you loosen that screw, all you're gonna do is just remove that, so you can see here. I'm just draining it into a uh, clear container here so that way I can see exactly what comes out of this thing. So once that's all drained, this will be all dry inside. All right, so that's all out. So we're gonna put this, this bolt aside, don't lose that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the fuel bowl nut. Once that nut is loosened, I, already, I just loosened it. You just pull that right off and then the fuel bowl will come off as well so if there's any re remaining fuel in there you can drain that out and if you look in here if you see dirt in there that's not good you should uh it should be completely clean and if you see in there there is a little bit of dirt in there so what we're going to have to do is just clean that out next to take this apart we're going to pull out this um this float pin right here it slides right out once that slides out, your float can come off as well, just like so. Set that aside. And then we have a, this is the main jet in here. And that is probably going to be the issue. Um, so if that's clogged, it won't let any fuel into the engine. So what you have to do to remove that is you can see there's two slots in there. You want to get a flathead screwdriver of good quality because if you use a bad quality screwdriver or the wrong size, it won't grip it right and you can strip it out really easy because it's made out of soft metal. So what I'm going to do is grab a, a good quality screwdriver like I just said and unscrew that and take it out. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. Just unscrews all the way there. Okay. 
All right, and just like that, it pops out. So once you pop that out, you can look through it. If you can see light through it, there should be a tiny little hole in there. And if you can see light through it, it's not clogged or it's not very clogged. So in this one, you can't see anything through it, which means it is clogged. So we're going to have to blow that out with compressor. Actually, you can see a little bit through it, but it should be bigger than that. So we can tell that that is, in fact, clogged, and that's probably our main issue. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this out. What I'm going to do is grab some carb cleaner. You can see I have my carb cleaner. It's pretty cheap at Tractor Supply. And then I'm going to take this outside, stick this in the little jet hole, and just spray this out. That should clean it out. Then I'm going to spray all the internal parts. So I'm going to spray this fuel bowl down. I'm going to spray this float here. But we want to make sure to not get the carb cleaner on the little seat, which is that rubber piece on top of the uh, float needle there, because the carb cleaner will eat away at the rubber. And that, that's the same for this little O-ring that, that uh, seals with the fuel bowl there. We don't want to get carb cleaner on that because it will eat away at the rubber. So I'm going to remove this, this uh, O-ring here. Make sure we don't get the carb cleaner on this uh, needle. And then we'll just spray everything off. We're going to spray it through this, this hole here and the, uh, um, this, this part of the carb here. And it should be all clean as well as all these little passages as well. So since this thing is all cleaned up now, I just blew everything out and cleaned it with carb cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and re reinstall everything. So first we're going to start with this float here. Just the same as we took it off. I'm going to put that on there. Slip that in. Then just put the pin back in. Just slides in with your hands, just like that. Make sure that's functioning properly. Then I'm going to go ahead and take the jet and put it back in. I didn't realize this at the time, but when I took it out and started blowing everything out, this jet also comes out and this goes in just like this, not the other way around. It goes in this way with that flat piece on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in just like that. Get this jet, put that back in as well. Screw that in nice and snug. We don't want this too tight because then when we go and try and take it apart next time, it's not gonna come out. So we just want this snug. It won't fall out on its own or anything. We just, just need to get it snug not too tight. So that's all threaded in there. You may have to push the first one down a little bit in order to get the second one to actually thread in because it, it's got to go down far enough. So now that that's all on, take this O-ring again, put that back. If this thing is really dry rotted and cracked, you probably want to buy a new one. The only reason I'm reusing this is because this machine is pretty new and this, I can tell this O-ring is still in, in good shape. It's, it's not uh, dry rotted and cracked or anything. So when I put this bowl on, I'm just going to put it, see the uh, inlet for the fuel is, is right there. I'm going to put this with this uh, threaded bolt piece on the opposite side. So that way it's easy to drain the carburetor of fuel as it's on the machine. So I'm just going to thread that piece that goes in that one. This one. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean off the top of this, this bowl real quick. This just goes in there. Everything, tighten it down, nice and snug. Don't do it too tight, because these will strip out, but just tight enough. All right, and just like that, we're all done cleaning the carb out. Make sure there's no dirt inside of there. And then we should be good to just throw this back on the machine. This thing is all put back together now, and it starts right up and runs great. So that's how you clean the carburetor on a Toro snowblower. Uh, this is a model, but yeah, that's how you clean the carburetor on a Toro snowblower. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe.